everybody, so Butter Knight here again, and welcome back to Tokyo Babel. Now, before I begin, I'm going to announce this in tomorrow's Higurashi video as well. This Tuesday, there will not be a, um, Higurashi video. Instead, it's going to be a double video that'll be going up. Not really much of an hour long, but I decided I might as well try to change it up a little bit. Have, no, since you guys, um, actually really liked the uh, reaction video, or the, that, that video of uh, Shiki that I did. I figured to kind of move along anim the anime watching a little, make it a little go by just a little bit faster. I'm going to record two episodes at a time. Like, I've, uh, here's the thing: I've actually got them both recorded, and I'm still. I just finished editing the first one. I need to get work on the second one done. So. Tuesday, instead of the Higurashi video, there will be two episodes of Shiki. I just wanted to try something different. If you guys don't like that, feel free to tell me in the description below. Or the comments below. What the hell? You can't adjust the description. Let's just jump right back in before I ramble on anymore. I kept searching for my book. I wandered listlessly from shelf to shelf, like a Medusa drifting deep under the ocean waves or like a mindless cupid driven only by instinct, and kept searching for my book. I checked volume after volume, desperately looking for a clue to be investigated, a lead to be followed. I lived through the past thousands of years in such idleness. Where could my book be? Konnichiwa. Uh, hello. I greeted Dantelion, the supervisor of the, of the library. They both turned in my direction, sighing with a knowing look in their eyes. Wait, they're both named Dantelion? The two students, a male and a female, met my eyes with a cold gaze. They were Dant Dantelion. Well versed in, and willing to teach all sorts of arts and sciences, the Dantelions were seemingly capable of freely manipulating human thought. Oh, so they're a race. Under normal circumstances, they all, strictly speaking, though weren't they one entity, were to the library. Maybe it's, is it pronounced Dantalion or Dentalion? Yeesh. ふらふらとここにさまよってきたぞ。アダム我々とてビブリオマニアであることは否定しないが、この状況でのんきに漫画など読んでいる場合か。Anytime do any anytime's good to read manga. Visibly weary of the conversation, the Dentalians exhaled another sigh. Actually, I think maybe it's pronounced Dantalians. If it's not, please feel free to correct me. I'm not known for correct or pronouncing names. I'm looking at you, Rena. Manga。人間の書いた漫画をそれはもう順繰りに読み吹けていたよ。Damn。何か順例のために必要な知識が欲しかったなら話はわかるが。Maybe how dare you! Yet another sigh followed. Initially perplexed as to how I ought to respond, I soon concluded that I had no obligation to do so. He resembled the original, only in name. Other than that, he was a complete stranger. The two Tantalians promptly resumed sorting through their archives. Well then, I directed my gaze from the library floor all the way up towards the ceiling, taking in a set of massive bookshelves looming above like makeshift imitations of the Tower of Babel. In here, gravity was regulated through magic, preventing any books from ever falling to the ground, which also meant that Dantalian occasionally had to collect the few stray volumes drifting through the air in order to return them to their rightful places. That'd be freaking cool seeing some floating books. <laughs> A calm stillness permeated the air. 
lacking in sanctity yet hardly quiet enough to be considered unsettling. I enjoyed being here. I leapt onward, soaring through the air, having already memorized the exact location of each and every book I had once read in this library. And the only question was on my mind was what to open next. The field of world history was hardly a unified one. There were as many different histories as there were parallel universes, leading to the necessity of an entire mountain of history books. Good lord! History books written by angels and demons were meticulous to a fault, allowing no room for potential alteration. <laughs> allowing no room for potential alteration of history to fit the needs of an influential outside party. Hello, Satsuna. Satsuna let out a bitter smile. Cre let a bitter smile creep onto his lips as he told me that. Back in his world, he too must have borne witness to the clash of multiple histories, altered pasts vying for dominance over even more altered versions. I myself had come to see many examples of such things. People's arguments over which team had won a sports match escalating to an all-out war, to cite one example. Yeah, sports can get that ridiculous. To us angels, a myriad of histories, a myriad of histories of countless parallel worlds existed unitarily. However, that was not the case to the people living in said worlds. One's own history mattered the most, a mindset harbored by the majority of humans, a mindset powerful enough to foolishly drive them to spill each other's blood. No, I should not have called it foolish. I smiled, conscious of my own situation. Had I not been just as much a fool myself, sparing no expense whatsoever in search for that book? I lifted a book off the shelf, swiftly leafed through its contents, then put it back, all in the span of three seconds. Damn. I repeated that action countless times, never caring to stop and rereading the earlier volumes. The moment I looked upon a page, its contents became completely embedded in my mind. Oh, so you have an eidetic memory? The Dentalians observed my continued efforts with visible amazement. They had never in all of their countless years seen anyone devour books at such staggering speed. Well, fundamentally speaking, I cared little for how others perceived me. Upon remembering my unlikely companion's former quip, my fingers halted their rapid browsing. I shook the image of my mischievously giggling friend out of my mind. I needed to focus on these books, not old memories. My finger reflexively stopped at a certain page. Even if my mind had stored all this data in pristine condition, I couldn't help but come to a halt upon encountering such a shocking piece of information. A mere history book, chronicling the events of one world out of many, yet it differed from the rest on a certain point. The memory of that day lived on in me vividly. The moment when Lilith decided to rescue a certain human from a certain parallel world. When Lilith went on to investigate the history of that world, she broke out in a cold sweat in a very, in a way very much uncharacteristic of a demon. She even went as far as saying something like that. When guided by Lilith, I arrived in that parallel world. I beheld complete and utter ruination. The scene unfolding before me dwarfed in intensity, even the heavenly destruction that once rained down upon Saddam and Gomorrah. The nuclear missiles had reduced entire cities to charred ashes, leaving nothing but desolate ruins in their wake. One would have difficulty even locating the corpses of the deceased. Hoping to find survivors was a fool's errand at best. Yet Lilith was firm in her conviction, confident that he was indeed alive. <laughs> We took to the skies at full speed. There was hardly any need to hide ourselves flying to his side. Tendo Setsuna merely gazed at the unfolding death and destruction before him with a great with a gaze bereft of emotions. And that was how he and I met. He accepted both Lilith's invitation and the existence of parallel worlds. We didn't even teach him how to fight. Lilith called him expendable. If Adam was to be a divine sword forged through the combined efforts of the angels, then Tendao Setsuna was no more than a mercenary steel, simple and coarse. 
もう誰にも扱えないような化け物じみた存在になっているんだけどね。I had previously inquired about Setsuna's past, yet Lilith refused to say a word. She claimed he may end up being persecuted if the truth came to light. And so, I had given up on receiving an answer. His name spilled forth from my lips without me even realizing it. The Dentalians were very much receptive to such things. I stared back at them, cocking my head to the side in confusion. ちなみに、恋愛ジャンルはその角を曲がって右に1キロ進んだ場所だ。<笑>その先を求めるなら、観音小説は。お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、I myself failed to notice how I had uttered his name. I floated down the hallway, wrestling with waves of odd, unfamiliar emotions. The students I passed turned to look in my direction with visible surprise. Odd. Had I done something to invite their gazes? Geez, sorry! I appeared to have angered Kamayo. He was positively fuming. I suppose it was time to meet this so called angel devouring student. We all sat in the classroom, with Sorumi right next to me. We were introduced to the class not as transfer students. Instead, things were set up so that we had always been students here. Our noisily chattering, chattering classmates were, in a way, both looking at and through us, like they weren't even registering us. The one person capable of noticing us was a certain Kura Miyako. Calm down. Sorumi's fingers toyed anxiously with the hem of her skirt. Noticing her distress, I decided to say something that could possibly ease her tension. I decided to say something that could possibly ease her tension. What? Oh, that's a good one. I've never heard of that. This method seemed to be quite popular in other worlds, even though it never existed in mine. Okay, seriously, this music reminds me of freaking Monokemia, too. Nor did I ever recall seeing anyone trying to swallow their entire fist. Sorry, stop it. Sorry, please. What's going to get for sticking your whole hand in your mouth? Well, of course it is. As I met with her antics with a sigh, I took note of a soft giggle from somewhere nearby. I turned around and froze in place almost immediately. The exact person we had been looking for was sitting right there, smiling at Sorumi. Kura Miyako. She gazed at us with a smile warm as a spring breeze, emanating an aura of feminine elegance. Hello! Startled by how abruptly she appeared, Sorumi's brain had completely locked down. She merely gazed back at her mouth agape. Having seemingly misunderstood Sormi's reaction, Kurao's tone took on a shade of confusion. I promptly poked Sormi's side with my elbow. That seemed to be enough to galvanize her, as she proceeded to shake her head with renewed vigor. You're a cancer? Hmm. Huh. Leo. I couldn't quite explain why, but I suddenly felt this immediate urge to karate chop her on the head. Thank you. Yes. 
I would not be surprised. Tendo Setna des Anatawa, Kuro Miyako san, Desne. Eh, so this kiddo. Yeah, Domo, Hajime must be a crossmate of this kiddo. Nakamo, Shotime, Kanjigas, Shikatanakte. So this taka? Ara, so eva, what does she?話しかけたこともありませんでしたっけ申し訳ありませんいえいえそれはこちらも呼んどこのない事情がいろいろとあった次第でございましてまあなんというか気にすんなと申しましょうかそれにしても私の真ん前の席ですのにどうして今の今ま
The classroom door slid open as someone ordered us to stand in a firm tone. All the other students around me began to rise from the desks. I followed their example. I like you. A robust looking teacher stepped into the classroom, proclaiming all that with the broadest of smiles. Most people would simply ignore his proclamation as a quirky joke. However, I was not most people. After all, I knew his true identity as the Demon Lord. <laughs> Stripped of all shred of composure, Stormy abruptly let out an ear-piercing yell. All gazes in the room fell upon her in an instant. The teacher himself looked at her in surprise. Oi, oi, <laughs> okay. Talking about being a lawyer. <laughs> um, okay. Is this the universe where Satan and Lucifer are two separate entities? Or are they the same? Uh, Professor Kumamoto nodded in response. That must have been his alias here at Pandora. Still, I know his real name all too well. The Demon Lord. The Worthless One. The embodiment of debauchery and vices laid to corrupt for the sake of corruption. And the jurist of hell. We called him Belial. Oh, your Belial? Kumamoto da. Oi, oi. How did you get so ramy? Temple feeling? Belial flashed a hearty smile. He knew all about who we were and what we were after. To, to, don't even I des yo. Yeah, just a little bit of a mess. Bad, bad, bad. Now we're chowling. No connection. That'd be pretty weird having a freaking demon as a teacher. I think it'd be pretty interesting, though. Exhaling a weary sigh, Belial made his way back to the oh god, to the back of the classroom. <laughs> Kuro and a number of other classmates giggled amongst themselves while Sormi flushed red as a lobster. We needed to talk to her after class. Ten minutes passed before Belial allowed Stormy to sit back down, prompting a quick sigh of relief from her. I paid attention to the class while, pa while part of my mind confirmed what I had known about Belial. The famed jurist of hell, master of lies and deceit, said to have commanded an army led by children of darkness. His most notable feat, however, is related to how he once prosecuted a certain holy man. He appeared to have lost the case, though. Either way, while Belial... No, also as an attorney in hell, had a certain intellectual aura to him. I couldn't help but look at the way he taught his class, occasionally laying out a hearty guffaw and think him to be somewhat of a rough, uncouth character. The very moment Belial left, the classroom regained its former boisterousness. <laughs> The moment we stepped out into the hallway, our link to the classroom was severed. どうしたの？いや、それは私が聞きたいんだけど。あの先生に何かあったの？何か見えたとか。ああ、そうか。うん、見えたことは見えたんだけど、私が驚いたのは別なことね。Is it because you saw him back in that that uh fake world that Gethel created? Stormy told me all about the circumstances surrounding the illusionary, the illusionary world Gethel had trapped her inside. The same situation that eventually brought us together. Which that kind of gives me an idea. All the faces, I'm betting, were people that Gethel knew. That's why it seemed like she did know who Lilith was. That's the idea that I've got going on right now. Her tone implied that Lilith's appearance in the dream was hardly anything to be surprised by. 
すごい力を秘めているって感じがしたんだけどあの人やっぱり何か違うの彼は有名な悪魔ベリア知ってるへえあうんうん知ってる知ってるそっか道理で強いはずだそんなに強かった Well, I know in the Persona games, Belial's freaking badass. Powerful, hmm? Well, of course he would be. He was a demon lord after all. Well, of course he would be. He was a demon lord after all. まず最初に熊本先生に怒られてリリスが南雲ユーリって名前で登場してその次にその次にカップルが出てきたんだあ、ブロンドンサムガールカップルうんあ、そうそう確かアダユメノスケって名前だったどんな性格だったうーん I smiled to myself and was about to return to the classroom when I felt the very air around us chill. I turned around, finding myself arrested by a nightmarish sensation, a feeling I couldn't for the life of me describe. A faded encounter. The kind of miracle man seldom ever experiences. I may have my head in the cloud at the time, but even I, Kugutsu Sorobi, could com comprehend the sheer improbability of a force like fate, miraculously guiding people to each other. Labeling everything as the work of fate was akin to entrusting all aspects of one's life to God. Or rather, the whimsy of an invisible, unknowable being. Take my meeting with Tendao Setsuna, Lilith, and Raziel, for example. While that encounter may have bordered on the miraculous, what truly counted as such was the fact that I had been in the right place at the right time. Our meeting itself was inevitable. Had I not ran all across that campus in a panic, I would never have been rescued. Had someone else been in my place, they would have been saved just the same. In other words, that meeting could hardly be labeled a fated encounter. It was anything but. And so my line of thinking went a bit like this. Such an encounter would only occur once in a person's life. A fated meeting with a person who would entice you in mere seconds. Someone to kindle a flame in your heart. Someone you could readily yield yourself to. Or perhaps, a rival. A person who would set your wrath ablaze in mere seconds. Someone to fuel your animosity. Someone you could never find common ground with. On this day, fate would grant such an encounter not to Kugutsu Sorami, but rather... Adam. Oh, so they're Adam and Eve, and I'm, that must that black hair must be Eve. Tatendo Setsuna. The man's eyes shot straight ahead, brimming with confidence. A young woman trailed behind him with a downcast gaze, occasionally stealing a look or two at her companion. I felt overwhelmed by their very presence, though not due to our prior meeting in Gethel's dreamscape. Quite the opposite, in fact. These two were nothing like their counterparts in my dream. It felt almost like comparing fool's gold to the real thing, or gazing into the glitter of scientifically created synthetic diamond, the differences between the insect that crawls upon the earth and the falcon soaring the high skies. Adam and Eve, they were beings far beyond my comprehension. That much I could understand. So there, Adam and Eve. I silently gulped. My entire being was assaulted by a rare feeling of unrest as I observed the pair making their way down the hallway. Despite my heart rate remaining unaffected, I felt it impossible to shake off the waves of unease creeping upon me. Displaying one's raison d'etre proved essential for life at Tokyo Battle. One would need to properly articulate it to sculpt their longing into words. Otherwise, it was doomed to failure, yet the man before me was different. He simply existed. And through that fact alone, he had asserted his very being. He was race and dator given flesh. That was Adam. Adam glanced in my direction. 
I stood petrified as he sized me up with a colorless gaze. Adam opened with those words, to which I replied by shaking my head. I'd never met him before. I'd only heard of him. Adam's expression shifted genuine surprise upon hearing my name. Hm. So he did know of me. Adam did his brows. None, but I couldn't help but want to have it. Straight to the point. Seemingly having lost all interest in me, Adam proceeded to direct his gaze at Eve. She stayed at the side of the hallway a short distance behind him, possibly in an effort not to stand out. Hi. Eve bowed in Stormy's direction, then hurried off after Adam. That man was blind to the world, surrounded by his mission, his duties and his goals. My existence was of no greater importance to him than a pebble in the sand. In his mind, the moment we parted, I ceased to exist. Sarmi nodded, much to my surprise. It would appear I had been agitated enough to let my feelings show. Obviously. Did I long to confront him? To do battle with him? To fight him to the death? Sormi went on, her expression grave and serious. Fate? I recalled what I felt in his presence, a sensation transcending dread, awe, or sheer animosity. A fated rival. To me, Adam was indeed a man deserving of such a title. Sormi's words had inevitably made me realize that. The moment we stepped into the classroom, we once again began to exist as everyday students. Kuro Miyako saw our entry and guide greeted us with a warm smile. What? Kuro was left somewhat perplexed by Stormy's joking tone. I observed her with a tiny hint of suspicion. Yet a moment later, Stormy quickly broke character and explained herself. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, my worst subject! We sat down at our respective desks, getting ready for the next class while Sormi began chatting with Kuro. I would have never been able to get this close to her by myself. We had our next break after a mostly eventless class. What? No, not at all. <laughs> Sarmi grabbed me by the shoulders and promptly pushed me in front of Kuro Miyako. Dobo. <laughs> 
She rose from her seat just enough to perform a quick bow. Why? You're very welcome. Sorry. A refusal to understand. Hmm. Either way, we spent the rest of our break chatting about inconsequential things. As all classes had ended and the st other students began to leave, I decided to call out to Kuro Miyako once again. You're the only member? Kuro grabbed her bag and left the classroom, with both Sorami and I and myself in tow. The hallways had been tinted a gentle hue of orange by the setting sun, with only a few stray students making noise in the distance. Kuro made her way through the hallway with absent, while absentmindedly admiring the scenery through the windows. After a minute or so, she abruptly came to a stop. She placed her palm upon the nearby window, gently tapping the glass as if to confirm something. フェイクうん。私も。Kuro turned around to face us with an innocent smile, happy to have been able to meet like-minded individuals. For a fleeting moment, I felt my heart rate intensify. She found the world to be off, realizing that there was something positively wrong about it. Jerks. No student would ever come to such a realization without a certain event to serve as a trigger. She let out another giggle. I felt like I was beginning to get closer to the truth about her and would have wished to continue the conversation, but acting too forceful here would only end up hurting her feelings. Please wait here for a second, I'll go get my horse. Once Kuro disappeared inside the barn, Sorami and I cast our gaze at the crimson skies above. この夕暮れも人によっては青空だったり夜空だったりするんだよね。そういうことになるね。宮子ちゃんが気づき始めてるのってやっぱり巡礼していたから逆かな。気づいたからこそ巡礼を開始したんだ。ただやっぱり予兆というか危うさがある。そうね。そのあたりは今日の夜にでも話し合った方がいいかも。正直に言って、私とソラミでは遠くスキルが段違いだ。当面頼ってもいいかな。え。Puffing up with pride, Sormia assured me that she'd take care of it. A moment later, I took notice of something unusual in the corner of my vision. Raziel. Raziel was trotting about the nearby field with a certain object. A signboard? Hanging from her neck?
What? <laughs> As Raziel turned in our direction, I could only make out the phrase, I am a dunce, clumsily scrumble, scribbled onto the sign she was wearing. <laughs> However, she was her usual aloof self. As Sormi was having difficulty trying to breathe from excessive laughter, Raziel glanced at us embarrassed, her cheeks flushing red. <笑>あずせば。やってみたけど、何魔力で封じ込めてる。神聖なものではなくて、黒魔術に近いから。リリースあたりにしか外せない。頼んだら何か夕日間もなく爆笑されて、絶対外してやらねえと笑顔で言われ
what would I do if I failed to comprehend even after seeing it? In other words, if what Sorami was seeing differed from what I saw. Wait, see? Sorami. As I presented my conclusion, Sorami looked at me like she couldn't believe what she had just heard. It appeared she was left astonished. As I made my position clear, she simply shrugged, meeting it with a sigh. She appeared to have taken it as boasting. I averted my gaze. I seemingly slipped back into old habits from time to time. Ah, yeah, Sorry, shrugged, seemingly not bothered by all this. Hmm. Oh. Kuro approached us, leading the horse by the bridle. Atop the animal sat Raziel, now in full riding gear. According to Sormi, I'd understand once I saw it. Hmm. Much as I had expected, I was still having a hard time comprehending this. As far as my feelings were concerned, I wasn't particularly happy, nor was I sad for that matter. Kuro, Miyako. Raziel gently kicked into the animal's side, which set off at a slow trot, rather than full riding speed. <laughs> Still, Raziel appeared very much satisfied. The scene was indeed highly picturesque, Raziel and the horse, both showered by the rays of dusk. I considered that for a moment. I gave her an honest nod. Oh, she blushing! For some reason, Raziel began nervously fidgeting in the saddle. Could she have heard my exchange with Sorby? Kuro abruptly interrupted, her gaze distant and without emotion. She went on, her gaze never once leaving Raziel on the horse. What? The words were no longer aimed at us. She was talking to herself. What the hell? Yet it had become clear that those were her true feelings. Her tone gave no hint of joy, anger, or even sorrow. She simply stated facts. <laughs> By the time she turned to face us, Kuro was once again back to her usual cheery self, with a faint a smile faint as moonlight upon a lake's surface. <laughs> So I backed up my curt response with a series of fervent nods. I heard the grating of metal upon metal, its clangor violating my ears. In the next moment, both Sormi and I found ourselves under the onslaught of bluish white waves. How beautiful. Oh, how truly beautiful. And how wretched. How utterly, thoroughly wretched. No. The concept of hatred had all but left me. All I feel towards you is repugnance. A maelstrom of turbulent images and sounds enveloped us, violently hurling a certain someone's innermost feelings our way. You despicable monster. You filthy, wretched girl. And you, woman. Disgusting beyond words. <laughs> I shook my head with a conscious effort, successfully dispelling that overwhelming rush of emotions. Arigato. 
Her words were the afterglow of a tremendous wave tinted in contrastive feelings. Hatred and happiness, sorrow and joy, all blending into one. They were broken, succumbed to madness. That was how both Lilith and Raziel described the so-called masters. To think how apt that description truly was. They appeared sound in mind and body alike for the most part. Yet a certain traumatic experience, or a certain heart-wrenching memory, prevented them from confronting the damage a, a part of their hearts had suffered. They would experience something during their pilgrimages that no sane mind could possibly withstand, and so madness ravaged them, thoroughly, and without mercy. At first glance, Kuro Miyako appeared just like any other person. No, not just appeared. She was. That, however, only applied to her student self. Out there in Tokyo Babel, the real Kuro Miyako lay in wait, a mere shadow of her former self. <laughs> Raziel, still on horseback, trotted closer to us. The horse came closer, and even closer. <sighs> Then neighed right into my face. One thing led to another and I found myself face to face with the horse. It peered at me with a certain animalistic innocence, gently poking my face with its nose. Good lord! I felt bad for the horse. このふくあらってから返すことにするはいありがとうございますそれでは私はもうしばらくアブドを走らせることにしますいや私たちはこれで失礼するそうですか Kuro once again gave the animal's sight a light kick, then swiftly rode off with a hint of relief coloring her features. アブド。どうしたの、ラジオ。調べたいことがある。先に帰って。あ、夕飯はカレーがいいなと思う私。オッケー、カレーか。材料さえあれば作れないことはないと思うけど。あ、ちなみにインドの本格カレーとか言われても
Shortly afterwards, the narration was kind of to remind her that her character died a pitiful and agonizing death, befitting the weakling that she was. Oh. The 33rd attempt? <laughs> Sarmi crept next to Lilith and pulled the controller out of her hands. Okay, Mom. Okay, so basically Bloodborne before the patches. Maybe the game itself was at fault here. Still, I decided not to voice my concerns, seeing how this was beyond my field of expertise. Sorry, pulled out a notebook, scribbled something on its top page, and handed it to Lilith. あれ、ジャガイモ、人参、牛肉。カレーの材料買ってきて。買う場所くらいあるんでしょ。あ、でも私たち知らないし。え。購買に行けば売ってるかな。でも面倒だから嫌。おお、ローリーロー。Without uttering a single word, Sormi started furiously poking Lilith in the flank. <laughs> Muttering a series of complaints under her breath, Lola left the room, only to return a minute later. I got the key. 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 I got the before I could finish that thought, though, Sormi loudly interjected, her tone filled with surprise and shock. Oh, God damn it, Sormi. This was just a thought, but Sormi seemed to be in the middle of being thoroughly deceived. Lilith? Tomatoes originated from South America. That was quite the distance from the Red Sea. Besides, the Red Sea wasn't actually red. In the end, as I didn't feel the need to interject with an explanation, I decided to keep quiet. All fired up, Sormi made her way to the room's rather minimalistic looking kitchen and promptly began cooking. Oh. <laughs> Just cut the freaking carrots! Lilith clutched her own chest, moaning in agony. <laughs> I warned her in advance. By the time Sormi was done cooking, Raziel too had returned. Raziel, I wanted to know something. I said it. Yes, I'll talk to you when I eat. We didn't add too much curry powder. Angel and Demon alike expressed their gratitude in accordance with their respective natures. As for Sora and me and myself, we merely placed our palms together with a curt bow. Yes! Sarmi triumphantly thrust her fist into the air after a single spoonful of curry, so the food was good, uh, apparently. As I rarely ever needed to utilize my sense of taste, I couldn't quite determine whether or not the flavors mixing in my mouth were good. I lamented the fact that regardless of how the food tasted, I effectively could not have been able to differentiate between good or bad. The only clues I had, reg had regarding the taste were the satisfied looks on the girls' faces. As such, it must have been delicious.
It was actually India, though. Yeah, even I knew that one. <laughs> Lilith nibbled away at her food with a melancholic expression. She really should have given that joke a rest already. Her tongue out in a co a co coitus co 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 bleh, fashion. Pure in chest, right. <laughs> Raziel silently pointed at Sormi, who was staring at the two with tear filled eyes and her whole body shivering. <laughs> Up a lungful of blood and fell prostrate onto the floor. Quick, grab a phoenix down! I'd consider it a compliment. <laughs> Utterly dejected, Sormi instead turned to me, still in the middle of working my way through the food. <laughs> I'm really sorry, but I lack the ability to discern what a good flavor is. Just as I was about to say that, Raziel and Lilith kicked me in the shin near simultaneously, forcing the words back into my throat. I was not in combat mode, so it hurt quite a bit. Surrounded by the murderous glares of Lilith and Raziel, I finally parted my lip to speak. Naturally, I had no choice but to abide by their wishes. <laughs> my ability to discern flavor may have been handicapped, yet I was certain the relief smile Sormi flashed my way was sweet. I wanted to tell her that. I felt I would have been right too. I had learned something new today. But not all lies were bad. Although, I was certain I told the truth just now. Hmm. With that said, once everyone had finished their post meal digestion, Raziel chose to speak up. Abdio? The news instantly made Lilith spurt out the tea she had been sipping. I consulted my database of knowledge to look up the one angel who fell under that Abudiel. name. Abudiel. Name of the 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 name of 変わった天使らしい。ルシファーの反乱で、アマタの悪魔を打ち倒したにもかかわらず。He ultimately took the remaining angels and rose up against God, claiming he was not the divine ruler they all thought he was, but rather the creation of an even higher being. And so Abdiel spoke, This God is no God of ours. It is but a harbinger of calamity, existing only to torment man. So basically God in a nutshell. He called it, Yaldaboeth, the false god. Yaldaboeth, 
彼は自分の理想を他者に押し付ける嫌いがあったから As I kept mulling over Abdiel, I came to a realization and cursed myself for not having noticed it earlier. So, Uma no name, Uma? Abdo, that's it. 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 Razio let out a concerned sign. Abdiel san to was she eyed up a no? She nodded. If I hear you, cute to me, Naka. Hanga Kustato, Sasagani, then Naka Tarenaka, not the Kido. Ma, so that's so that you may. Lukashiwa Yoku, Gardostan, no mea de Kuchiteta. An angel drinking at a pub. I'm just trying to picture that. I was going to say that's racist, but how would that even work? Uh, hmm. Yeah, fuck it. I don't know if there's a term for that. Sorami. Dajiel no Jordan ni tsukiyau koto wa nai yo. Wait, she was joking? Te yappari Jordan ka. Well, shit, I didn't see that coming. God damn it. Raziel went on, her expression showed no sign of concern. God, what could he have been doing in heaven right now? At this point, I wasn't even certain he existed up there at all. Tonight, the only problem is one thing. Abdiel's strength is what it is. Yet, upon hearing those words, Lilith irritatedly bit into her own fingernails. Strong, isn't it? A fallen angel and a demon lord, a powerful pair indeed. おまけにもともとは人間一人を守護するだけのただの天使だったね。それがルシファーとの大戦争でみるみる出世してセラフにまで登り詰めた。And in the end, he still threw it all away. ちょ、ちょっとタイム。刹那勝てるの？どうかしら。ひとまずあれは持っていくことになると思うけど。Lilith pointed at the blade once wielded by Gethel, the sword of the seven deadly sins. While the sword was in inescapable of engraving a sin upon angels, it could still very much summon the beasts corresponding to the seven deadly sins. Its very blade was soaked deep in powerful sorcery. The words sluggishly trickled forth from Sormi's lips. Her astonishment was only natural. After all, we would need to fight and kill a person we just befriended. Sormi, you are the one who told me about Kuro and Miyako. She is not a person who is going to be a person. She is a person who is going to be a person. She is a person who is going to be a person. Not going to stop me from feeling bad. So, that's why I have to kill you. Raziel balled the hands she had been resting atop the table into fists. Really? Sarmi exhaled a relieved sigh, seemingly having accepted the situation. 
それよりも問題なのは苦労都とアブディエルのレゾンデートルせめてそれが知りたいところ The Raisin d a t e r セツナはまだ見つけてないんだっけ She was right. I did to discover my very own Raisin d a t e r ねえねえ明日以降だけどどうせ残り二人もチェックしなきゃいけないんだよねえー、と、確か日の上くんと大芝くんだっけそうだけどだったらさ。Sormi offered to take care of those two students while I focus on finding my race in d e t e r The other girls agreed, and so I spent the following two days in Raziel's company in an effort to try and discover my race in d e t e r Race on dare. There we go. Unfortunately, the following day's weather was mostly dominated by rain. Yeah, that would be kind of weird, honestly. Sarmi and Lilith left the room, leaving me alone with Raziel. She returned to my question with a puzzled look, almost like she didn't entirely comprehend why I even asked. Meditation, huh? I did exactly as I was told. So far, I'm liking you the most. Yeah. <laughs> She dozed off right before my very eyes. With little other choice in the matter, I decided to contemplate matters of my own. I was created for the sole purpose of serving mankind. That was my reason for being. Was there nothing more to it, though? I had a feeling that alone would not be enough. Conversely, that very line of reasoning in itself could very well have been a mistake. Serving mankind had an amiable ring to it, true. Yet what I had done was undeniably a deed befitting the most wretched in villains. If I closed my eyes, I could still recall it. A world where man devoured man, where people from all across the globe spilled the blood of their brethren, driven to near insanity in the wake of overwhelming despair. So Junko was involved, huh? I was created to save that world, to stand as a beacon of light in the, in the darkness. Yet ultimately, I took mankind's hope for the future. And crush it in the palm of my hand. I embraced my race and deter, dare, only to strangle it to death with my own two hands. Was I, if not a savage, to be abhorred, a sinner to be judged? And so I continued to exist, shouldering the resentment of billions. Hmm. In which case. But. My race on dare was to be punished, for I had committed sins far too great to be overlooked, far too despicable to be judged even by the law. The abruptness of her voice pulled me away from my introspection. Razio sat neatly in front of me, staring deep into my eyes. あなたが生きるための真実は絶対にそうじゃないでも私の世界は滅んでしまった刹那は生きている私は生きてなんかないあの時リリスとラジエルに救われる直前に多分死んだんだ Razio shook her head in silence 死人は喋らない
死人はどこまでも違うでも She poked me on the forehead right as I was about to present a counter argument. <laughs> Raziel gave me an intense glare. She went on immediately, giving me no opportunity to question what she was doing. Damn. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I felt somewhat lost, but it appeared she had qualms of certain parts of my argument. She probably meant exactly what would have happened to her without me. After analyzing the possible outcomes of a situation in which I wasn't present at the time, I concluded that she most likely would have been killed. So,なるだろうけど。作った人間も、救われた人間も、命が尊いものだという認識をしなければならない。で、私は。Raziel nodded, then clutched my hand. So basically, you die a Shiro or live long enough to become an archer. Raziel shook her head, sadness palpable in her tone. She once again shook her head from the condemning what she had just said. I still wish to be of use to everyone. It was a naive thought, something Raziel confirmed by shaking her head. It sounds like they're pronouncing it raison d'air. Words failed me, but not because I had forgotten about Sormi. I merely took the time to once again savor the sheer gravity of that fact. Raziel's gaze showed no trace of emotion. I froze up, completely overwhelmed by the revelation that Kugutsu Sormi's life was so closely interwoven with mine. She could no doubt survive even if I died. That was the conclusion I arrived at. After all, Sormi's eyes, Gethel's eyes, were of critical importance to both Lilith and Raziel. Mate. あるあなたが救った命だ。救った命には責任を持て、そうでなくては。だけど、ならば、あなた一人が死んだとして、彼女はどうする私の見る限り、空見は責任感が強い。たとえ自分一人でも巡礼を続けるだろう。I had no answer to give. Naturally, I could advise Sormi not to consider continuing her pilgrimage in the event of my death. But in that case, Lilith and Raziel could convince her of the opposite, claiming that Gethel's eyes were of vital importance to them. In fact, they wouldn't even need to convince her. 
Kukutsusorumi would readily continue the, her journey across Tokyo Babel without as much as a second thought. Her words pierced my heart like the sharpest steel of the swift or the swiftest bullet. Ten billion lives. I recalled the time when I wished to save that many people, yet ultimately collapsed under the weight of that responsibility. Was I truly desperate to help others of my own volition? Or was I merely acting upon someone's orders? In which case, did I abandon them because I was ordered not to save them? I fell deep into thought. Had I been mistaken, or the ones who created me, the ones who worshipped me? Despite my best efforts, the answer remained vague, locked in darkness. I began to doubt if there was even an answer at all. I kept mulling things over, completely oblivious of Raziel and the outside world. After a short while, I felt the touch of someone's hand on my cheek. Raziel gazed at me with a frown, her expression that of profound compassion. That was the first thing I could blurt out. I did not react well to pity or sympathy. If anything, I preferred to be scorned and detested. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I was powerless. I couldn't do anything. Do a thing, please forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <sighs> the miserable poor man. How my heart bleeds for you. I recall the days when I still lived as my old self, when I was showered by such words. <laughs> Raziel briefly nodded. Shishkito。知識と情報の重要性を教えてあげた。でも全部無意味になりつつある。神はどこかに消えてしまい、天国も地獄も地上もなくなった。残ったのは高場戦場と化した東京バベルだけ。yeah, you know, shit's gone down and friggin' hit the fan whenever a friggin' angel admits that God has forsaken them. Raza's expression mirrored the complexity of her turbulent emotions. Silence. Plenty of time must have passed. I began counting the sounds of raindrops against the earth to the best of my abilities. 13,834, 26,567. The Sefer Raziel, the book she had lost, the tome with all knowledge contained within. I abruptly realized something. Raziel's shoulder drooped forward. She too had yet to find her race on Dare, in a manner of speaking. Or rather, she had lost sight of it. Neither of us had value to our current lives. I had yet to find it. She had already lost it. That was the only difference. Really? Oh. I replied immediately. Raziel broke out in sweat. She most likely did not expect me to deliver that line, considering the circumstances. Why? Really? What? 
Raziel sunk to her knees while letting out the strangest of moans. So, stay. Majimena Hana Shio stayed to Kini. Neo to Shinaide Hoshi. My follow up sentence delivered the final blow, and Raziel, albeit reluctantly, got back up on her feet. Majimena Hana Shio got to Zukto. Domoko Nemutako not to Kite. Stop it. Watashimo Taigai to Moketo. Raziel Mo Taigai. Kukio Yomanai type and Janida Roka. And there she goes. I felt it best to whack Raziel on the head, yet she simply went on in the same, tragically spaced out tone. It appeared she wished to reach the library. I knew the place and could have easily taken her, but she was still asleep. This was quite the conundrum. I picked the only option I had. Oh! Letting out a resigned sigh, I slipped my arms beneath Raziel's knees, lifting her up into my embrace. She had switched to full-on sleep mode, which meant I couldn't just piggyback her. Still carrying around like I was helping an injured comrade on the battlefield would most certainly qualified as this is really dodgy, even by my standards. With that in mind, I concluded this form to be the most appropriate, given the situation. Our appearance drew a number of gazes from fellow students, but I doubted it would cause too much of a stir. Oh, nothing mischievous at all, Belial. Belial called out to us in an uncharacteristically polite tone. <laughs> After a few seconds of silent contemplation, Belial left, vanishing behind the corner. But not before he peeked fr back from beyond said corner to say one final thing. God damn it, Belial! Take our time with. what? Either way, I hurried on towards the light. Oh my god, you are dense, bro. The sheer majesty of the place left me in awe. It appeared from the outside certainly did not do its interior justice. A series of unnaturally tall bookshelves lined its halls, towering above us like colossal spires. The Dentalians gently drifted from bookshelf to bookshelf, making certain that each volume was in its rightful place. Dentalian was a demon possessing multiple personalities, all of which had now gained the body of their own here at Tokyo Battle. Okay. They all turned in my direction the moment I entered the library. <laughs> というか、なぜそこの天使は寝倒しているのだ。図書館に連れて行けと言われたので。だったら、昨日彼女が閲覧していた場所はそこだ。ありがとう。本は元にあった場所に戻すように。Okay, ma'am. I mean, individual. I um collective conscience. I think I took off flying towards the direction the Dentalians had just shown me. Was that the name of this position? The Demon of Sloth? Muttering under their breaths, the Dentalians promptly returned to their work. Once I arrived at the designated bookshelf, I gave Raziel's cheek a light pinch. <laughs> oh, good lord. Raziel's eyes flickered open as she sniffed the air. Indeed, the smell was unmistakably that of ancient books. Not the most pleasant of scents, though. However, once Raziel had fully awakened and took her in her present situation, I decided not to say another word. You, you said they take you to the library. いや、それは私が運んだからだけど。以前リリスに私は眠いから図書館に運んでって言ったら、いいわよラジエル。座標ずれたらごめんねとか言われて思いっきり蹴り飛ばされた。しない。I wasn't quite sure what to think of Raziel after hearing she would prefer someone launch her into the air as opposed to giving in to sleep. She's 
she latched onto my neck. <laughs> I could have refused it, found no reason to do so. On the other hand, I got the feeling I really should have. My question made her throw a confident glance my way. <笑>あ、<笑><笑> A fair point. In the end, I felt it my duty to deliver at least a light flick to her forehead. Um, no! Why is with that face? She wasn't being particularly persuasive, though. Raziel cocked her head to the side, her expression one of puzzlement. She was aware of it. Her expression once again turned tense, eliciting two simultaneous sighs from the Dantalians. <laughs> Ultimately, Raziel's position remained unchallenged, forcing me to carry her around in a princess hold during the entirety of our stay in the library. Good lord, Raziel. And that's where I've run out of time. I'll go ahead and save you right here. Wait, no, I gotta save you right here. And now I'll save right there. Okay, holy shit. I'm surprised I was able to get myself a lot of extra time this time. Anyway. Go and jump back to the title here. I'm surprised. I'm kind of okay. I'm I'm, I'm liking these interactions between with Raziel and um, Setsuna. I don't know. I, I don't know what it is about Raziel's personality. She just seems kind of charming, I guess, in her own quirky way, I guess. Though I'm not um, I am kind of worried about this Miyako individual. See, the thing is, I was under the assumption that if you kill the the um, real one, then their student form would, you know, die with them. Hmm. Well, I mean, as long as she's alive, I guess that would be fine. But I wonder how different the real Miyako is compared to the student one. I'm sure we're going to see which one, how bad, how the different it is. But other than that, that's all I've got. This episode made me laugh. I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So, if you guys, if you guys enjoyed it, be, please be sure to let me know. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.